It's my first impression is this place is awesome. Some birding locations are so iconic that they warrant a special visit if you're anywhere close to them. One such place is Central Park in New York. On a trip to the northeastern U.S., we had the opportunity to check out this extremely well-known park. Hey everybody, this is Derek and Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today we're at an iconic location, Central Park in New York. We're here with Nathaniel and our friends Jeff and Otis who are locals from uh, New Jersey and they're showing us around. We just took some of the public transportation, including the subway to get here, and we are pumped to see what kind of species we're gonna find. It's a little early in migration, so I think a lot of the warblers are not here yet, but hopefully we'll see some cool birds nonetheless. The first proposals for Central Park began in the 1840s. Throughout the next decades, the processes of designing and building continued, and eventually led to the creation of what is now an 843-acre park. Through various designers, landscapers, and artists along with several restorations, this green space designed for people to have an escape from the bustle of the streets of city life morphed into a beautiful work of art nestled right in the middle of Manhattan. In current times, it's one of the most visited parks in the United States, with more than 42 million visitors per year. In terms of birding, Central Park is a premier destination for people in New York as it's one of the few large open spaces in the area and complete with forests, ponds, and other water features. With so much space, it can be intimidating to search through such a massive and complex area. But fortunately for us, local birders Jeff and Otis offered to lead us through this New York City gem. Central Park, this is one of my favorite places in the world. When you really think about it, Central Park is a work of art. This is uh, nature that is maintained and cultivated. Uh, in the middle of a city and uh, every time I walk in to hear the birds, to see the people, uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful gift. We started on the edge of the park where the sharp contrast between the city and the greenery could be seen. In this area, we spotted a lot of the usual New York City birds, such as house sparrows and pigeons. In addition to these species, however, were a few native birds, including blue jays, American robins, and a pair of red-tailed hawks. Moving around the park, something stuck out to us about the landscape that we weren't expecting. So my first impression is this place is awesome. There are a lot of people, but they're actually pretty spread out, and there's a ton more elevation here than I thought. There's like a pond down here, there's rocks. There's a lot of like uh, elevation changes. I thought it was just gonna kind of be flat, but you can actually feel kind of secluded in here it over there. We're finding a ton of birds and it's just kind of the start of migration too. And then the buildings all around, it's got a great vibe. Central Park is an absolutely insane place to go birding during peak migration. At the time of our visit, migration was just starting to get underway, so we didn't experience the full force of warblers and other species flooding the grounds. Even so, we immediately spotted kinglets, a field sparrow, and absolutely tons of white-throated sparrows. After taking some time to view these species, we made our way to another prominent feature at the park that plays a major role in drawing in some unique birds, Hernshed Lake. We're at the pond now in Central Park and this serves as a great place for ducks and other waterfowl. Haven't spotted any yet, but I bet we're gonna see something out on that water because it really is a great place for all of these birds to come in in this little oasis. On this day, we found Canada geese and mallards around the lake, but on other days, Migratory duck species make stops here, serving as a major draw for birders. After scouting out the water, we made our way to another well-known part of Central Park, the Ramble. We are now entering the Ramble, and Jeff was saying it was made to mimic the Adirondacks, so it's supposed to be a place you can kind of lose yourself. So we're entering it here, and hopefully we can find some other cool birds. There were some white-throateds hanging out here. That's been one of the most prominent calls. There are loads of house sparrows. I'll see some be like, oh, what's that? House sparrow. Oh, what's that? House sparrow. And starlings and pigeons. Just heard a trill. That sounded maybe chipping sparrow. As we headed toward the Ramble, the skies opened up producing a beautiful scene of rain falling in Central Park. 
Even with the weather, we pressed on and continued birding. We got some rain coming. Yeah, we got an eastern Phoebe. Rain and Phoebe, wow. Rain and Phoebe. Would you say there's something special about Central Park in the rain? Yeah, I would say so. It's a really cool spot. Shortly after seeing the Phoebe, we continued through the ramble as the rain also continued to fall. In spite of the weather, the bird activity was not ceasing. We had an eastern towhee in the ramble. Uh, there's been a kinglet. The white-throated sparrows are calling non-stop, or I guess singing non-stop. And uh, it is getting a little heavier rain, so I'm going to put some of the gear away just for a little bit. There's a cardinal perched up um, that the guy is taking a look at, so that's pretty cool. A short while later, we spotted our first warbler species of the day. Got a warbler, first one of the outings so far, so that's really cool. I don't know if we'll see any more warblers with the rain like this, but we're going to give it a go. But I'm always a fan of a black and white. Pretty cool. It was cool how you went on the ground. I've yeah. never seen that. We continued on, making our way to the Shakespeare Garden, an area containing the bard's quotes and some of the flowers mentioned in his plays. This is the Shakespeare Garden. Very pretty. I haven't seen a lot of birds here except for some house bear nests. Rain's getting a little harder, but we're going to continue on. At the garden, we spotted one of the birds in his works, the European starling. We also got a look at a much maligned but classic New York mammal species. Otis, thanks for getting us our first New York City rat. You're welcome. That's a life rat, that man. I wanted desperately. We I'm needed so that. I'm so glad we got the New York Are City rat. Like In this area, we also spotted copious amounts of yellow-bellied sapsuckers, a species that we were excited to see. Five sapsuckers. Five sapsuckers? I think that's most of our seen together once. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of sapsuckers. So something interesting about yellow-bellied sap suckers is they don't actually suck sap, they drill wells in the tree and then it fills with sap that they then lap up with their tongue. So it's a little bit misnamed, but it's still a really interesting thing that these birds do. So I guess it's at least associated with sap, so whoever named it was close. Next, we moved on to the Belvedere Castle, which we were able to climb up and get a view of Turtle Pond. On top of the castle, we found another warbler species when a palm warbler flitted up into view. After climbing down the castle, we went on to explore some of the more wild parts of the ramble. Here we started picking up steam, finding more migratory birds. So some of the main noises we're hearing are loads and loads of white-throated sparrows. A lot of house sparrows, we do have some of the other migrants like the warbs singing as well. Uh, woodpeckers, we just had downy and red-bellied, but really the <laughs> Bird of the day, I think, is the white-throated sparrow. You can probably hear it in the background right now. Just had two eastern towhees for some brief looks, so that's a new species to add to the visual list at Central Park. It's one of my favorite birds, I would say, that comes through in spring. I just love the color combination. We located another interesting bird species when Otis spotted a secretive warbler. Oven bird. Nice. Flagged. So. Hey, you look so proud. <laughs> Oven bird's a really neat like species. Bird. We've only heard it on the trip so far. Um, and it was just walking kind of this like uh, fence line. But it's so great to see the warblers coming back because they're just starting to come back to Wisconsin. Now we got some for New York. Next, we made it to a place with flowing water that looked like it would be an absolute gold mine during peak migration. On this day, we found a sparrow species that was new for our trip. There's a swamp sparrow over here. You can tell why this is amazing for migratory birds uh, with the water flowing, and it's absolutely beautiful. We watched the swamp sparrow for a bit longer before continuing our walk. At this point, it was hard to even tell where we were in the park. Fortunately, Jeff had a helpful tip on how to find out where we were. So this is a good trick if you ever get lost in Central Park. Um, just find a lamp post and just go to the, uh, the little faceplate and it says 75, which tells me I'm at 75th Street, right? And so that'll help you to get your bearings. After getting some pointers on how to figure out where we were in the maze of paths, we arrived at the water's edge where we found our fourth warbler species of the day. 
We just got some nice views at two Louisiana water thrushes. That was a great find. I always appreciate those because sometimes they'll move through Wisconsin so quick that you don't get them. So they're one of the earlier moving warblers. Really nice find. With the lighting starting to fade, we called it quits on an amazing day of birding. Well, we just concluded our walk at Central Park in New York City, and this was a really cool place to go birding. It exceeded my expectations, I would say, and I'm really glad we had the opportunity to do this. Yeah, it's just a great mix of kind of people doing their own thing, the wildlife doing their thing, and it really does feel like you're almost in a garden just in the middle of the city. So great atmosphere. I can understand why people love this and why it's such a great spot. It was amazing to have the opportunity to go birding in Central Park and even better to have two experienced birders that live in the area to show us around. Throughout our time in New York, it was evident how special this place is to the people who live there and frequent its historic grounds and meandering trails. What's interesting about our visit is that we barely even scratched the surface of what there is to see in Central Park, and we will have to come back again someday during peak migration. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Badgerland Birding.